How's it going YouTube? Today I want to do something a little bit different and look at the options for inputting guitar into VCV Rack. Uh, not just as an effect, but also as a controlling device, kind of like a MIDI guitar. But first, I wanted to check out some of the distortion uh, modules and see how they sound with a guitar going through them. I've got a bunch lined up here and they're all going into these switches. Um, I've got this werewolf as more of a preamp than anything else because it's not particularly distorted on its own, but it could work in serial um, to boost the signal. So it's a bit of a preamp. First, I've got this Debriatus on a pretty low setting. Uh, so let's just have a listen to that. So, sounds pretty good. Let's bring up the fold. And maybe the saturate. So yeah, pretty cool sound, a uh, little bit digitally, I guess, but I guess that's true of most uh, digital distortions, I, I would argue. <clears throat> but let's move on, because we've got a lot to cover. Uh, let's move to this next plugin here from CF called Disto. It's extremely aggressive sounding. Really weird sounding. <laughs> Kind of like it's uh, got a resonant filter in it. Alright, we gotta bring this back a bit. It's way too intense. It's got kind of like, uh, almost like an auto-wah effect. It's pretty cool. I quite like it. Uh, let's move on. Now, this one is extremely... It needs a gate. If you don't have a gate, it just goes nuts. And honestly, even when you're playing, It's uh, really aggressive.
but it does sound quite good. I do quite like this one a lot. I think these modules are pretty funny from uh, Dan T just not even conforming at all to any kind of Euro rack shape. And that's fine. Like, why should it? But it is it is amusing to me. Um, I've got this going through this wave, wave shaper just to boost the signal a bit because on its own, it's a little bit quiet. Uh, but moving on, we've got this distortion uh, plug, uh, I keep saying plug-in, uh, module from Surge XT. It does sound pretty good. I actually think it's quite high quality. Um, there's a lot of presets. Some of them are more aggressive than others. Uh, I will say just quickly, unfortunately, my picking is coming up on my microphone. There's not much I can do about that, but you keep hearing this sort of picking click kind of sound. Apologies for that. It is what it is. Uh, it's pretty cool sounding. Again, it's a little bit quiet. But, I do think it sounds pretty good. But we got more to get through, so let's keep going. Um, We've got Vacuumba here from Hora. Uh, this one I think is really smooth. Doesn't sound very digital at all, and I really appreciate that. sound maybe slightly digital. I think that it's just completely unavoidable, honestly. And you can uh, shave off a lot of that top end kind of aliasing with EQs and stuff anyway when you're using it in a mix. I find this is true with a lot of guitar modeling uh, plugins or even guitar modeling uh, like outboard gear. It doesn't really matter. I think it's just uh, d digital getting distortion right in the digital domain is just tricky. Um, but I think the other thing as well is that when you're playing guitar in a, like through an amp, you get so much volume and density to the sound that it sort of changes the way you play. So you can still get that with digital tools. You just got to sort of uh, set it up accordingly um, to give you that feeling. I will say though that the latency the latency on these modules is pretty good. Uh, I'd say it's probably better than uh, my Softube uh, guitar modeling software. But anyway, let's move on to these ones from Blamsoft, these XFX uh, distortion modules. Just click over here. Uh, these are a bit brutal, but I think they sound pretty good. And for these ones, I think I'm just going to take off the uh, delay and reverb. So we get a bit more... Again, they're not like particularly loud, so we're just going to bring this level up. They're not like amazing, but I think they do sound pretty authentic. You've got a tone knob here so you can... Get 
getting a bit carried away. Um, apologies for <laughs> some of my playing. It is what it is. When you have a guitar in your hand, it's impossible not to noodle, I find. Anyway, um, now we're moving on to this one called Grunge. I actually think this one does sound quite good. So yeah, uh, good sounds. Let's move on to this next one. And our final one for this set of modules. This one has four models, honestly. They don't sound very different. I almost can't tell the difference. Um, which is not ideal, I've got to say. If you're going to have three models, make them sound different. Um, Pretty good, I gotta say. I do like these three. Okay, so my favorite out of them, I don't really have a favorite. They're all pretty good in their own unique way. I really like Debriatus uh, for synths. Um, in fact, I like a lot of these for synths. Wave Shaper is one of my u most used plugins, uh, keep saying plugins, uh, modules in VCV. Anyway, let's move on to the next thing I wanna talk about. I'm just gonna unmute that. Oh, sorry, mute that and unmute this. So here I've got set up, I've got my guitar signal going into a tuner just so I can tune it. I think it's gone slightly out of tune while we've been playing, but I'm not gonna tune it up on this video because fuck that. Um, but I have it going into this little module called Hot Tuner from Nisthi. Nisthi make great modules. Um, and it is, it converts, incoming signals, audio signals, uh, and takes the pitch from them and converts that into CV, which is pretty cool because it means I can control oscillators with my guitar. And I'm gonna mute that. And I'm gonna go through, I've got several oscillators set up here and we're just gonna go through them one at a time. So first I've got this noxious pure distortion oscillator and this is gonna sound a bit brutal. Now, you may have noticed that the tracking, it's a little bit off. It's not, and also there's latency on it, so you can't play super fast, I find. But, it is kind of interesting. So if I use my Ebo... You can get some cool results with that. Um, but, you know, basically you're sort of wrangling with a beast. Like, it's never going to be as accurate as an actual MIDI guitar or a MIDI guitar pickup, but it is pretty impressive that I'm just sending audio in and it is... Like, 
the fact that it's working at all, I think is pretty impressive. Um, so anyway, let's move on to a different oscillator. I feel like this oscillator, I don't think it's the oscillator, but there's a lot of modulation happening on the noxious oscillator. I think the bleak oscillator, because it's simpler, there's, it just tracks a bit better or it sounds a bit smoother. But again, I think that you're probably not going to be plugging a guitar into VCV to actually play something that, you know, to actually play synths. Because uh, you may as well just use a keyboard or a sequencer for that. But it does offer this kind of warbly, slightly out of tune, kind of unstable quality, which I quite like. <laughs> So, also the bleak analog oscillator just sounds great. Um, <clears throat> I've got another one here, the Vesic, which is another complex oscillator, which sounds pretty brutal. So let's give that a go. <laughs> and I'm modulating a lot of stuff with this uh, uh, module over here from Wicked called Langor, uh, which is a random generator. <laughs> So, <laughs> maybe not the most usable there, I don't know, it depends. If you want some sound design, it's pretty good. Alright, so the next one I want to look at is the Macro Oscillator, aka Platt. Uh, and this is where it gets a bit more interesting, I think, because it is still tracking a bit awkwardly. But it's quite interesting. And you may have noticed that I've got a, uh, I've got a, a, a trig coming into the trig input and I'm using this uh, Hora envelope follower to generate a gate or a trig and you can see it on the scope here. So yeah, it's, and of course with Platts, we've got all these different models. So a lot of options, I think, which is pretty great. Like, again, you Like, you might not be using this all the time, but I just think it's cool that you can do it. Uh, we've also got all these uh, more percussive ones. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, let's try the last one that I have set up here, and that would be the resonator. Now, this one I think actually works quite well. And the other thing that's crazy about it is you don't even really have to play notes. You can just hammer on. Which, you know, so 
So, <laughs> oh my God, uh, it's pretty cool. I, one other thing that I should mention is that I'm using this uh, Nisty envelope follower uh, to to cr to control the the VCAs on the mixer here, but I'm not using it for these ones where I'm using the trig because, like, they're both. This one has its own inbuilt. Um, VCA and then and it's more of and some of it's sort of physical modeling anyway so it just needs like a uh, what do you call it like a bit of like a trig or a noise or whatever um, but the resonator is the same so all it really needs is a volt per octave and then it just you know triggers its uh, own physical modeling engine so it doesn't really need uh, a VCA and an envelope. Whereas if you look up here on the, the NIST, the envelope follower, I've got an envelope being created every time I hit a note. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, as for like a little fun play out uh, on this video, I've got this patch here in which, I'll just turn it down slightly, in which I'm using, uh, I've got a trig set up, I've got some sequencing set up to control this strings chord generator, which is like a guitar chord generator uh, from CV Funk. Um, and without going through all of the details, I've basically got three resonators which are playing two notes of the chord each. Um, and I'm using this strummer from Nisty to give it like a bit of a strum. And I really like the sound of it. I think it's quite interesting. Uh, and I figured I would just play out a little bit, uh, noodle along <laughs> with it and uh, leave it at that for today. Um, but yeah. Please uh, like, subscribe, all of those fun things. Uh, please comment, let me know what you think. Um, yeah. And uh, I'll see you next time.